Okay, good afternoon, everyone. I will start the class now. So, as I was, um, as I tried to build some motivation or the significance for genome editing, um, and that was to highlight the importance or the requirement or need for CRISPR Cas system. So, anytime we are learning about a, a genetic technique, especially, we should know why did what is the importance of that particular genetic system for the in the living beings because you should know how it works and you should know how in the future if you come across an amazing stuff and how to identify that it is um, that it is it has or identify its uniqueness crispr cas system i think was uh, identified a long time ago but nobody knew what's the uh, importance of it um, and you have to also be aware of how discoveries may happen and how unrealistic they actually look like say when barbara mcclintock identified the jumping genes or transposons it's it it was it sounded crazy even now i think it is uh, kind of crazy to know that there are genes that can actually move from one part of the chromosome to another part or one part of the dna to another part so crispr cas system is also something uh, equally amazing actually so we need to learn about the biology and little bit of molecular mechanisms otherwise it would take a long time to learn all of the we will have to read some 10 15 papers probably uh, but i will try to summarize and eventually uh, in the later class we will try to learn about its applications okay and that is for the sake of applications uh, it is included in this and that is why it is one of the most potential i mean it is one of the potential um, uh, tools that we have now to edit genomes. So let's uh, get started with that. And I will try to give you an overview. And I would also want you to understand or try to remember uh, some of the uh, terminology. So clustered, uh, I will describe this again too. But uh, CRISPR is C clustered, regularly interspersed, short palindromic repeats. OK, this is one of the things you, you will have to remember CRISPR. And there is also another one, uh, CAS, CRISPR associated protein. That is for CAS. And then there is also um, PAM sequence, or uh, PAM, you will call it as. That is uh, protospacer adjacent motif. Uh, we will go into each of these details, uh, each of them, in a while. But uh, you can uh, you can think of this class uh, as trying to get used to um, the terminology and hopefully also understand some basics. If there is anything required, we can uh, always uh, repeat these things. So they they were in in bacteria. They have a uh, uh, they have a clear or nice function actually it is it's the kind of um, immunity what is immunity that is if an in organism is infected with some pathogen the immune system develops antibodies against the pathogen and it remembers okay it, it will eliminate this uh, the pathogen that is uh, that has attacked and the immune system that we have has memory of what has infected and next time it the similar um, pathogen infects us the immune response is much more ready that is also the same thing as what we have discussed about uh, for vaccination right we want to prime the body or get make the body ready uh, with antibodies against some known um, lethal pathogens so immunity is about attack, OK? But that's not all about it. Attack and memory of the attack. So that memory, uh, it will eliminate the pathogen, but it will also remember the uh, sequences or some uh, motifs about the uh, pathogen that has attacked. 
So in this, what typically happens is um, while I will I, uh, while I'm describing this, I might be re redundant through the uh, through today's lecture, but that's all right. I hope you will be able to. Uh, I think it's in the better best for us. So here is a phage, and the square, the rectangle that is depicted is the assume that's the bacteria. The phage infects, uh, like we learned in lambda phage, for example, it will inject its DNA, and typically, if it were like the cycle, it will make more copies of it and destroy the cell. Now, some genetic systems have evolved within bacteria that kind of protect the bacteria from um, bacterium from the infection okay so how does it do is uh, interesting we need to uh, remember how it creates the memory also how it uh, attacks the pathogen how it creates memory so the first thing is once when it is injected and if that particular bacterium has crispr cas uh, crispr cas genes what would it do is um, it will take bits of the DNA from the pathogen and it'll incorporate into CRISPR. I will describe about this in a in the later slides. Just try to get used to what I'm trying what uh, I'm speaking. So some part of the phage DNA is incorporated into CRISPR RNA, CRISPR sequence. Then so that is the kind of memory that it develops. So next time, for example, so uh, the CRISPR, RNA, CRISPR is transcribed and it produces something like this, a long pre-CRISPR RNA, OK? And that long pre-CRISPR RNA is further processed into smaller um, or specific CRISPR RNAs. And these CRISPR RNAs will associate with Cas proteins and will form a surveillance complex it's like going around and seeing if uh, any sequence that is matching is found there or not if the bacterium uh, sorry the phage here if the identical one again infects or related one closely related one infects and injects its dna the rna the crispr rna now has sequence complementary to the dna which will bind base pair and the nuclease the the cas proteins that i said those are crispr associated proteins they are nucleases they will degrade the dna so uh, i i hope you see how and why people refer crispr uh, cas9 system as an Im immune system of bacteria it's because it is able to eliminate the pathogen by cleaving off this DNA and also remembering that uh, also making a copy of that uh, small sequence of from the DNA, uh, from the phage DNA and putting here. And now it has developed several uh, surveillance complex. If it has infected, if a similar phage has infected again, there is through base pairing, it will identify that it is the same phage and it is a phage first to start with and then it will get cleaved off right there is elimination of the pathogen and there is memory of the pathogen so and then uh, that makes it a qualified kind of immune system i don't like to use the uh, word immune system for this but i think it's it qualifies as a, a matter of uh, through its uh, functions at least that's what our immune system does too So what we will um, see is trying to understand each step a uh, little bit slowly now, OK? Today, we, we are only discussing about the um, biology of CRISPR. What role does it play in, in bacterium, and how does it play? So now I'll get into a little more uh, what is CRISPR. So C-R-I-S-P-R. Clustered, regularly interspersed, um, short palindromic uh, repeats. Okay. This is this is a cluster, right? From here to here, you see a cluster. 
regularly intersper interspersed, you can see that there is a repeat a spacer, repeat a spacer, repeat and a spacer. That is the meaning of clustered, regularly interspersed, short palindromic repeats. So here you have a repeat. Each repeat is actually a sequence, something like this, something like this, not exactly, which is a palindrome. I hope you can see that uh, GATC and you have a GATC. And if it can, it can form a hairpin loop like this. GATC here, right? And you can see that it can base pair with this one, GATC like this. So I hope you are able to now uh, remember what CRISPR stands for. Clustered, regularly interspersed, short. These are not very long, right? The repeats are actually short. Short palindromic repeats. Okay? That is the sequence that we are actually looking at here. That is CRISPR array depicted as CRISPR array. And there are also other genes associated. Those are, I mean, CAS proteins we described. That is CRISPR associated proteins. Those are the genes that are uh, nearby here. So the CRISPR, the locus of uh, CRISPR is something like this. It consists of protein coding ORFs, okay, several of them, and uh, yeah, let's uh, let's stick it to stick to it now, like this. So it it um, it has genes uh, ORFs that code for Cas proteins, that is CRISPR associated proteins. Those are usually they are nucleases. They can be nucleases of DNA, or they can be nucleases of RNA. It depends on the type of CRISPR. There are several classes and types. Uh, just remember those. And before you uh, try to remember it as a hard and fast rule, whatever I'm describing here, the information has come from different organisms, and there are always variations between them. In here, what we are discussing is are the general features of most um, uh, CRISPR-Cas systems, OK? So this is the organization. There are CAS, uh, uh, ORFs encoding CAS proteins, or genes encoding CAS proteins. Then you have a leader region, and then several um, repeats, regularly interspersed, short palindromic repeats. So the first thing we need to now know is how, how does a CRISPR RNA say a bacterium is infected with a phage? And how is the DNA taken in? I think I will try to also uh, uh, make this name here. So there are several steps. Uh, first one is adapt adaptation. That is the process of acquiring the DNA of the pathogen or the virus. Second thing is expression. Expression includes the expression of uh, pre-CRISPR RNA and also the Cas9. The next one is... Uh, interference that is it will um, uh, kill any pathogen any similar pathogen that is attacking with sim uh, with complementary sequences but at the same time it can also take when it is when it is killing this the genome here it might also pick some some more fragments and then insert into crispr that will add more specificity right it will increase the probability with which the phage will be degraded. So that is called as priming. So adaptation, expression, interference, and priming. So now we have uh, what we are trying to, first step is about uh, acquisition of the DNA. There are two proteins here depicted in uh, orange and blue. They are called as Cas1, Cas2 complex. It is a. It forms a tetramere. Uh, they are of tetramere of or uh, hexamere of Cas1 and Cas2 uh, Cas proteins. So, the in adaptation step for adaptation, Cas1 and Cas2 are important. They are the ones that pick up this the spacer or uh, the spacer, and then incorporate it into the CRISPR uh, local CRISPR array here. Okay. 
what it does is uh, the uh, the cas1 cas2 complex it will cleave different parts of the dna of the incoming invader dna and that is referred to as protose spacer until it is put into the crispr region you call it as a protose spacer okay and it does cleave it doesn't pick up a, a dna just like that okay there are i think in the next slide we will get to that uh, just hope uh, hold on to what is meant by pam just remember that the cas1 and cas9 pick up sequences or uh, which will then be called as protospaces and those protospaces are selected based on a small uh, nucleotide sequence called as pam protospacer adjacent motif okay or you can actually think of it that this is the protospacer anything adjacent to the pam sequence is taken as the protospacer okay just remember in the next slides we will discuss little more details and then you will probably understand uh, better so this protospacer is carried and uh, integrated into the crispr array and now uh, you had two green spacers here now a red protospacer is in now you have a new spacer here and also a new repeat okay how it happens we will see into the next slides so once a crispr is uh, uh, i mean uh, crispr rna uh, crispr from here is transcribed there is a promoter which will allow the transcription and uh, the crispr transcribed crispr array is processed to generate several crispr rna those crispr rna will now the, this is a another cas protein these two cas proteins cas1 and cas2 are involved in adaptation picking up the protospacer and incorporating or integrating it into the crispr array the another one that we have here is the one that associates it's a it's also a nucleus which associates with the crispr rna now you have a ribonucleoprotein rnp is ribonucleoprotein complex it is consisting of crispr rna and cas proteins okay this is not cas1 or cas2 they are involved only in adaptation in uh, maturation formation of those things and in interference there is another cas uh, there are different numbers given in different organisms so i think you already heard uh, cas9 so we'll just call it as cas9 for convenience okay so next time any uh, phage comes and in, in uh, injects its dna and if it is uh, it will be complementary to the one of the sequences that we have because it has been just freshly picked up and the cas9 i'm just saying it as cas9 it will uh, start cleaving the dna okay therefore therefore what happens is the target is completely uh, degraded and bacteria is saved that this bacterium is saved okay then uh, there are several crispr uh, types i'm not going to in in all the details but what is a common feature is that um, there are nucleases cas proteins there is a protospacer and uh, there is a pam sequence in all the cases you may have different of those i mean crispr rna will also form so there are um, two type two you should remember probably some of them they target the uh, uh, the dna they bind to the dna and uh, uh, cleave it there some of them are um, they attack the rna this is r uh, pam okay so just remember that there are multiple types in different organisms i'm not going into those details it all depends on where is the hairpin loop uh, where, which side is the PAM binding? Where is the cleavage made? And other kinds of uh, differences are there. But that's all right. So the question now is, how does it, first of all, how does it take the, incorporate the protospacer? Here is a protospacer. This is the foreign DNA. Here is the protospacer in which you have this. This is the PAM sequence. Here it is, GAA. 
okay or i should say aag and ttc on the or ctt on the complementary strand this is processed by cas1 cas2 complex and it will generate a it the pam sequence is kind of reduced now uh, to g and this sequence is picked up and incorporated into the crispr array i don't know if i can present it well but i will try my best just see how it can generate that so i am trying to draw a hairpin loop like i have shown you before uh, that the repeats ha are palindromic therefore they can form a um, loop like this i mean a hairpin loop like this now i will um, so what cas1 cas2 also do is they make a cleavage here okay so uh, if you excuse me i will try to draw a small um, sequence here and here and i'll also put a different um, um, i'll put the later sequence here okay this is the later i hope you will will be able to understand here is the later this is the i i uh, this is the already existing spacer i mean this is long there are many other repeats and spacers but i'm not drawing that here is a hairpin that is forming in the repeat palindromic repeat that is there now what it what happens is the in the dna the the protospacer that is here is brought and it's made a cut here so where does the cut uh, where is the cut actually made in the diagram that i'm trying to draw it is here okay and the the near the pam sequence at the 3 prime it will uh, form a nucleophilic i mean sorry a phosphodiester bond here and it joins like this okay so there is only a single strand cut so what i can do here is i'm going to put a, a different um, color i'm going to now draw a spacer that is already attached you can assume it to be something like this okay that is the spacer now what happens is there is another nucleophilic attack that happens in this location first one happened here second one happened here in this picture here it is shown as single linear ones okay so the cut is made here and then it is ligated so you have two double strand breaks here is a cut and here is uh, another cut isn't it these are single ones if you extend you'll get the spacer incorporated like this this is single strand of a repeat this is another single strand of a repeat they will be filled up by the um, dna polymerase one or so now you have a new repeat here right and this is assumed that this is the old repeat and there is an incorporation of a of a new spacer let me try to show you what happens in here okay so what i'm trying to do is i will try to um, take this and put it here um i think you will excuse me one second okay so i will try to draw it and hopefully i'll be able to present it um, in the way i wanted to do i wanted to so here is the dna that is attached here something like this okay i am representing this step now i have to represent the other step for which what i will do is there is going to be a cut here there is going to be a nucleophilic cut here and then you can think of this whole thing uh, taken to this place like this okay if i can put these two strands up um, i hope uh, you will be able to adjust that so let me see if i can do this yes i think it will be it will work out so the new spacer is somewhere here now and the this is one of the single strand of the repeat i hope you can see that right and uh, this way can be linearized and the new uh, you can think of a new repeat is formed something like this maybe it doesn't have to form a hairpin at the level of dna okay 
but uh, may, um, it is likely that the repeat itself has a function that is going to be recognized by CAS1 and CAS2. Remember that all of adaptation is done by CAS1 and CAS2 proteins. Okay? This is about breaking the DNA and putting into the CRISPR array. And this is how uh, a new one can, uh, new spacer can be incorporated. For sake of understanding, I hope you understood it. If not, we will again discuss in the next class. Uh, but that is how DNA is, um, or the memory is made. Next time, so assume this is the naive acquisition, which means the first sequence of a of a plus of a phage, first time of the first unique sequence that is taken. That is, uh, it will cut near Cas1, Cas2 will cut near the PAM site. That is a protospacer, and it will incorporate into the CRISPR array, like we have just discussed. And there is a new uh, repeat that is formed here. So new spacer is here. Next time, if the if there is similar a phage with the identical um, sequence of uh, sequence complementary to this new spacer is attacking the bacterium, then because this uh, CRISPR RNA is generated, it will cleave that DNA. This is the DNA of the new phage, and because of which you will get new more new fragments from here, and those fragments also can be incorporated. This is the first or uh, first protospacer spacer that has been um, included in the naive acquisition here. And the next ones that are being uh, from the same phage, if they are being incorporated, then you call it as priming acquis acquisition. You are adding more sequences that are complementary to the um, phage. So here is a problem. I hope uh, I'll be able to give. What am I saying is the CRISPR RNA that is produced will go and base pair with any DNA that has the complementary sequence, such as this one. Yes? Uh, let me erase this and try again. So what does CRISPR RNA do? It does, um, it will target any sequence that has complementary sequence. Now, if I take the bacterial genome, assume this is the bacterial genome that I have drawn. You have Cas129 and so on. And then you have the CRISPR uh, array, OK, with spacers and protospacers. So the CRISPR RNA is produced from one of the spacers, isn't it? And that spacer is complementary to the um, to the spacer that is present in the CRISPR um, array. And then how is the spacer that is present on the genome protected? Why is it only that the phage uh, genome that is coming in, this CRISPR is at attacking them, attacking the phage DNA, but not the genomic DNA of the bacterium, which has the same sequence because uh, the complementary sequence, the CRISPR RNA is produced from here. Transcription of it will produce. It has complementary complementarity to phage, and it also has complementarity to genomic DNA. Then how is it should be troublesome to have something like that? Because if you cut the genomic DNA somewhere like this or make a double strand breaks, usually the bacterium dies. Okay. That is a um, typically what happens. So we need to understand uh, one thing. How is the phage DNA degraded, but not genomic spacer is protected? That is how that is what we need to understand now. So the 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 important thing that you we see is uh, we need to know which one is self or non-self, right? Genomic DNA is self. And uh, uh, the phage DNA is non-self in terms of uh, CRISPR RNA. If, you, if we cut this, then it is going to lead to death. If we cut the phage uh, that is non-self DNA, 
we will be able to survive right somehow this cutting of self dna should be prevented and that happens through some mechanism something like this the crispr rna has um, a hairpin loop that comes from the repeat okay and this is the spacer that has about somewhere around 20 30 uh, base pairs bases say 33 base pair bases and this is the only sequence this is the only sequence that has come from the phage the rest of the sequence is that of crispr or you can call it as the self okay so if there is a phage uh, the crispr rna has little more sequence here is some more sequence like this this is complementarity to the phage dna and if it also finds complementarity to these regions or these regions okay maybe here it is a hairpin loop so it might not be a spare but here on the other side there is if it is complementarity it is this part of the crispr is self this part of it is self isn't it if the target sequence is unable to base pair here that means it is non self if it is able if this five prime sequence is also able to base pair to the target dna that must be because it is a part of the repeat here then cas protein does not cleave it cas protein activity is prevented there i hope you understand how beautiful uh, the, the the logic of it and how evolution brings up so much so many logics for survival and propagation okay so the evolution of crispr genes and this whole array itself is a little bit tough to understand or speculate there are different theories uh, but that is what we can understand now so until here if you have any questions uh, you can tell otherwise um, i i will yeah this is the final part we now want to use the the crispr system as a tool to uh, make edit genomes and in that case we actually have more complexities than normal so there are um, as i was talking about uh, crispr types and so on there are multiple things there are two rna molecules one is crispr rna and the other one is called a tracer rna crispr rna and tracer rna they form a kind of complex along with the cas9 proteins okay what happens in a normal situation is that the um i wanted to i think i didn't put the figure um, but i will just give a this is anyway just an introduction so crispr rna and the uh, tracer rna this provides this crispr rna provides specificity for target target specificity and the tracer rna kind of um, is required for activity of cas9 or the whole function of this um, the cas9 thing so if we want to build a make an automated one so what people have done is they made a made it a combined one like this now we just have to produce two components one is the crispr uh, tracer and crispr uh, rna together that is the it is a single one rna molecule and one protein right then if these two i mean these two will form the ribonucleoprotein which will cleave based on the specificity provided by the sequence here spacer okay that is how uh, uh, people have used these things and there are a, we will learn about uh, what all it can do and there are fantastic um, aspects that we, they can do one thing i haven't uh, figure uh, spoke about is probably yeah because i was talking about um, 
the biology of or, or the significance of these uh, sequences to bacteria in the during uh, cleavage it only cleaves nearby pam sequence why is that can you um, the target sequence are usually um, that are present on the target targets are all usually having this uh, pam sequence why is that it's because you remember during adaptation cas1 and cas2 they cleave dna near pam sequence and then they process it and uh, they just take the g and the spacer and then in integrate into the crispr array okay and that's why when they are targeting or interfering with the second uh, wave of phage attack they this the sequences are usually near the pam sequence why i'm describing this pam sequence now is if you want to make specific um, specific changes like we were discussing in restriction endonucleases type 2 we want to be in control of where which sequence is recognized and where the cleavage is made right the same way we want to have a control about if we are saying the crispr cas9 crispr should go and cleave a dna at a specific site then we need to have a lot more control over it okay for that we need to because crispr cas9 is evolved to cleave near the pam sequence we should always find targets nearby pam sequence those parts we will discuss in the uh, next class okay any questions here uh, i will end the class today with this um, i mean we kind of tried to learn about the biology today and some mechanisms interesting ones and uh, this is not a complete um, uh, guide to it okay we are learning as much as we want to and we should so there are four steps i'll quickly revise and i will stop okay try to remember these uh, words uh, the the terms crispr it stands for clustered regularly interspersed short palindromic repeats cas for crispr associated protein and uh, pam for protospacer adjacent motif so there are four steps adaptation expression and then there is interference and then there is priming. Adaptation is picking up these phases and incorporating into CRISPR array. Expression is expression of Cas proteins and the pre-CRISPR RNA and maturation of CRISPR RNA, like as shown here. And then interference is cleaving, uh, deleting or cleaving any new phage DNA that has been in, in, inserted or injected into the cell. And priming is picking up more sequences from the degraded uh, uh, phage genome and incorporating into CRISPR. So the first time it is, uh, this is adaptation is kind of uh, naive acquisition. And then, uh, sorry, oops, yes. So I hope you all, you also understood this part um, where I, the same thing basically. Um, the first one is, this is the Cas proteins. Some Cas proteins are involved in integration, uh, taking the protospaces uh, proto and incorporating into CRISPR array like here. Some are involved in interference. So these CRISPR, Cas1 and Cas2 are involved in adaptation. Cas9 is involved in interference. So I, I just try to describe uh, yeah, I tried to describe how uh, the f the incorporation of protospacer happens, and every time a, a protospacer in, is incorporated, how a new repeat is generated. That is another important thing that we need to also remember and understand. And then, um, yeah, I was talking about naive acquisition. That is the first time, first one sequence that has been taken up from a a bacteriophage and the other one is priming acquisition where more phages phage dna molecules are uh, sequences are acquired 
upon repeated infection. Then um, we also spoke about how a self and non-self are distinguished. The distinguishing part happens about the five prime end of the CRISPR, if it is base pairing or not. Okay, if it is not base pairing, that means it is a non-self DNA, and then Cas9 would delete, uh, cleave it. If there is base pairing on this five prime strand, which means this whole thing is base pairing, which would indicate that, or which is, which means that this sequence is uh, likely self, and therefore Cas9 would not act upon it. Okay. And yes, um, the, there is more. There are more. Uh, that is, uh, tracer RNA is one additional component that is required for the activity of Cas9. So, CRISPR, uh, CRISPR RNA is for specificity. Cas operon or the Cas9, for example, is for nucleus activity. And tracer is to make the nucleus act, activate the nucleus uh, uh, activity of cas9 okay so we need these three components and in the next class we will describe about how it can be modified to use as a genetic uh, as a tool to um, edit genomes okay any questions here um yes sir, i had a doubt yes please um, so in the slide where you're shown the mature 33 base pair protospacer, you said um, it was shown that the spacer region is getting replenished, right? Is it being yes. replenished or is it just being cut and uh, the viral DNA is being added over there? Um, okay. What I was trying to say here in this picture, okay, the one part of it is newly made, okay? And uh, the other one is old one. And here is the old, uh, another old one. And this is the new one. So basically, one hairpin loop was something like this. Okay. And then what happens is during um, incorporation, one of the parts will be moved here. And this is where the protospacer is attached. On the three prime sides, it is HS. This is a three prime, the phosphodiester bond, and so is here. Now the DNA polymerase will fill this gap and synthesize a new repeat based on the information on on this uh, remaining part. Now, previously we had one repeat, and now we have two repeats. Okay, that's what I meant by replenishing. Okay, sir. is that understood? Yes, sir. Um, so if this keeps happening, the spacer region remains the same size and the overall yes. bacterial genome will keep increasing? That's right. That's a question. Um, so here is something like this, right? The new ones are going to be added here. And the old ones will keep on moving back. And it's more number of attacks, the more likelihood that the number of spaces added are also, will be also more. But what happens is, in the last ones, usually by then, if the bacterium is not um, being attacked by those kind those phages, they will keep degenerating. Okay, in bacterium, the genome size cannot be too large, like in eukaryotes. So those that are in the the end of these um, the in the array, the three prime ends of those uh, spaces that are there also repeat that are here. Are usually lost; they get degraded over uh, generations. But there is no active mechanism of removing them. It is a kind of passive, uh, like we spoke about evolution. So even if a mutation happens in them, nothing is going to happen. Then it will be uh, eliminated slowly. Uh, did I answer your question? Um. Yes, sir. It makes sense. But then, uh, for that to happen, shouldn't the spacer be at the very end of the genome instead of somewhere in the middle? No, uh, bacterial genome is circular, right? So it doesn't matter where it is. Uh, say if this is the CRISPR uh, repeats and so on, and the on the the new ones are added near the leader, 
this is the leader saying this is the leader new ones are incorporated here these will be the oldest ones and as more and more are added there will be mutations here and there will be also loss from here yes i got it yes it's circular yeah. plasma i kind of forgot that for a minute so. yeah, yeah circular genome yes that's right yes sir. okay okay sir any other questions yeah good good if you didn't understand i'll try to repeat it tomorrow uh, maybe quick review and then we will get to um, get to the applications of it okay you have to understand these uh, concepts well enough because i think there are there is one or two uh, one or two papers that we are supposed to read uh, that are based on crispr so i, I hope you are uh, you will try to watch more videos i already sent you the links there are multiple links uh, multiple links in that in different stages as an application try to understand them and that will be fruitful in the next uh, class okay so i have another doubt yes please um in all the viral all the viruses that uh, affect try to attack the cell cas9 yeah. will only cut out the pam region or does it cut any other region uh the so, yes cas1 and cas2 are creating this specificity kind of they they recognize sequences that are nearby pam sequence okay so the protospacer also has a little bit of uh, pam sequence and when they are uh, when the crispr rna is made and so you can also assume something like this cas9 or cas proteins are have evolved around pam so cas1 and cas2 are cleaving based on the if there is a pam sequence and cas9 also cleaves um, if there is a pam sequence nearby the uh, target sequence so for requirement i think i will uh, end with this one probably that's a good one to do so if cleavage should occur what are the things that we need first thing and what are the things that are required and which one shouldn't be there first thing we'll need crispr rna uh, for specificity specific binding through complementarity complementarity then we need tracer rna for uh, functioning of cas proteins and cas9 for cleavage i mean nucleus activity and then it shouldn't have um, the target sequence the binding of crispr to the target sequence should be near pam sequence okay this the specificity specific region should be near pam regions because cas9 proteins have evolved uh, to function or recognize the pam sequence the last one is that the 5 prime end of crispr rna should not should not have base pairing if it is base pairing that indicates it is self if it is not base pairing that means it is non self these conditions should be met if we want the target sequence to be degraded okay did i answer yes sir Okay. okay, so so Pam okay, so is on the viral genome. Yes. Okay. It okay. is on the viral genome. That's right. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank yeah. you. Mm. Okay. We'll see you tomorrow. Uh, if you have any questions, you can ask. But otherwise, we will meet tomorrow. Okay. I'll t uh, discuss about applications. Please watch the videos and come. Um, by that by those videos you will understand probably more than what i'm actually teaching so then it will be much more fruitful to all of us okay take care and uh, see you in the next class bye bye